Hey everyone, Professor Davis here to finish up our talk on acid-base extractions. Now remember, this is part two of two, so if you haven't seen part one yet, I recommend you go back to our YouTube channel, Chem Survival, and find part one and watch that first, because we'll be going very quickly through some of the uh, general concepts and examples we used in that uh, particular talk. So liquid-liquid extraction is a very powerful technique for separating organic compounds from one another. So long as each compound has a distinct preference for one of the two immiscible solvents used. Now, one way to do this is to realize that small organic ions are much more soluble in water than they are in organic solvents, and their neutral counterparts tend to be more soluble in the organic solvents. So the question here was, how do we choose the pH of an aqueous layer when conducting a liquid-liquid extraction? And the answer is we select a pH which will ionize only one of the two compounds in our physical mixture, thereby making that particular compound more water soluble and keeping the others less water soluble. So let's begin by looking at the example that we used in our previous talk in part one. In part one we compared two naphthol with a pKa of 10, a very weak acid, with benzoic acid, also a weak acid, but a little stronger than naphthol with a pKa of about four. So if we were to create Henderson-Hasselbalch plots for each of these, what we would see is two plots with transitions at one at each pKa, but otherwise very similarly shaped. So this means that we're looking for a region where the solubility is maximized, and that's going to be in the basic side of the plot because that's where we see the charged naphthalate and benzoate ions. But what if instead we have an organic base, like 2-naphthalamine? Well, 2-naphthalamine actually becomes charged and forms 2-naphthal ammonium when it's in very acidic conditions. In fact, the pKa of 2-naphthal ammonium is about 4.6. So to create a Henderson-Hasselbalch plot for this, I have to start at 100% ionized and transition to 0% ionized as I cross the pKa. So you'll notice that it looks very similar to the other compounds plots with the exception that it's flipped over, if you will. It's been inverted along the y-axis. And this will change the landscape of our Henderson-Hasselbalch plots and make us rethink which pH values we want to use for our aqueous layer extraction. Again, just as a quick background, remember we tried to separate a physical mixture of benzoic acid and naphthol using a liquid-liquid extraction and their Henderson-Hasselbalch plots. When we did this, we realized that very low pH values were going to have everything in the organic layer, which is not going to give us a very good extraction. So to try to remedy this, we moved to a pH of about 7, which caused most of the benzoic acid to dissolve in the aqueous layer as benzoate but left the naphthol behind. So this would be a good extraction. But if we change our system again by moving to an even more basic region, what we find is that now we're dealing with naphthalate, which is also soluble in water, and we're back in a situation where we're not separating the two compounds. So we arrived at the conclusion that a pH of about 7 was optimal for separating naphthol and benzoic acid. But when we try to apply this kind of logic to a system of naphthol and naphthalamine, we see something quite different happens here. That naphthalamine henderson hasselbalch plot has been flipped over, which means the regions where we see the greatest difference have also been changed. So if we start at a very acidic pH and take a look at what we expect to see, our physical mixture should already have partitioned we expect to see the naphthalamine dissolved as naphthal ammonium in the aqueous layer, while the naphthol is left as a neutral compound in the organic layer. If we move to that pH that worked so well for us last time, about 7, what we see is that we've reached a point where we're no longer dealing with a charged uh, naphthal ammonium ion, now we're dealing with naphthalamine, which of course is going to partition more strongly into the organic layer. So at the pH that worked for us last time, we now have a very poor separation. This is a suboptimal extraction system for the compounds that we're dealing with right now. 
If we move even further into the basic region of the plot, what we notice is that we cross the pKa value of naphthol, meaning that it's going to become soluble as naphthalate in water. So once again, we have an extraction that we expect to have a very good chance of working. What's interesting about this is that when we're trying to separate acids from bases, that instead of a nice neutral mild pH, we need to go to extremes. So this is the disadvantage. It requires a lot of acid or base. However, the advantage of trying to separate these two compounds is that we get a choice of which one will accumulate in the aqueous layer. Naphthalamine at low pHs and naphthol at high pHs. And we can choose whichever system suits our needs the best. So let's review what we've talked about in this series. We talked about how titratable organic compounds are most water soluble when they're in a charged state. Now there are two different ways to get molecules into charged states, if you will. Acids can be deprotonated to charge them and bases can be protonated to charge them. So for acids, aqueous solubility is maximized when the aqueous layer pH is at least two units greater than the pKa of that compound, which gives us a Henderson-Hasselbalch plot that looks like this. Transitioning through the pKa with maximum water solubility in the basic region. But for bases, aqueous solubility is maximized when the aqueous layer pH is at least two units below the pKa of the compound's conjugate acid. You notice that the 2 naphthyl ammonium is acting as the reagent in my equilibrium above, and that's not an accident. That's what the species whose pKa I need to use. So the Henderson-Hasselbalch plot is going to look more like this. Still transitioning through the pKa value of the conjugate acid, but this time with maximum water solubility at lower pHs. Using this information, I can basically take any plot that I want, overlay them, and look for regions of greatest difference in the percent ionized in water. When I find these regions, I can identify them as the best possible system for me to use for extraction. So if I want the best chance of a successful extraction, I'm looking for these regions where those Henderson-Hasselbalch plots are as different as possible. And this is how we choose the pH of an aqueous layer in a liquid-liquid extraction. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you the next time.